Hi, this is Janae from the Itch to Stitch. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the alternate letters of our Starstruck font in free software from Umbrilliance. Starstruck is a script font that includes capital and lowercase letters, numbers, and punctuation, but it also has two different sets of alternate letters. It includes alternate left letters. These have additional swirls on the left-hand side of the letters intended to replace the first letter of a word, and alternate right letters that have a swirl on the right-hand side intended to finish a word. Because there are 131 files in this set, there aren't enough keys on the keyboard to map them all to the same BX file. So there are actually two BX files per size of this font. You will see um, that in your options. So for the starstruck regular named font, that's going to have all of the capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and punctuation that you're used to seeing. So if you look down here in the text box, you will see that that's what I've entered here for all of those. And you can see them all on the screen. For the alternate lefts, those and the alternate rights can all be found in a separate BX file named Starstruck Alternates. And you will see that the left letters have been mapped to the capitals. So if you want an alternate left, you'll type a capital letter. And the rights have been mapped to the lowercase letters. Hopefully that is logical to you. If you're wanting to replace the first letter of a word, you would type a capital letter. And if you're wanting to replace the last letter of a word or name, you would use a lowercase letter. Let's get started and see how this works. So I'm going to create a new page. And I would like to see my grid and hoop. So I will check draw grid and draw hoop. And I want to make sure I have my 5 by 7 hoop selected. So that's my 130 by 180 millimeter hoop. All right. We click the A button to create a lettering object. And let's just start with a name. I'm going to start with the name Christy. Click Set. And from this menu, I'm going to choose Starstruck 1.5 just to bring in the regular letters. Now, when we map this, we did our best um, to position the letters vertically um, to match the original artwork of the font. And then the automatic letter kerning that Embrilliance brings in between the letters has zero spacing. So you'll see that the letters touch or the box around the letters touch. But for script fonts to look best, letters actually need to overlap. So you can first of all make some uniform global changes by sliding this space bar down here at the bottom to tighten up the text. But you may still need to do a little bit of letter tweaking yourself. So I'm going to zoom in and just start moving my letters around. If I click the green square inside a letter, I can drag just that letter. And I'm going to scoot my C out just a little bit so that it looks like it is connecting just like that. My I connects well. My S, I will scoot it over. If I click the green pennant on the bottom of a letter, it will allow me to move it and everything after it. All right, so now that seems to fully swoop appropriately. Let me scoot my T over and my Y. All right, and now if I zoom back to one to one, I see that I've got my name nicely laid out and evenly placed. And if I have just the words selected, then I can click center and hoop and it will center my design before saving. All right, what if I want to see what it looks like with that alternate Y at the end? What I need to do is create a second lettering object and select the alternates the same size, so the 1.5 inch alternates. Now remember that default text in here is a capital A, B, C, so it's bringing in my left A, B, and C. What I really want is the right Y, so I will type a lowercase Y and click set. And then drag this into place just to see how it would look visually. And I like that, but I don't want to stitch two Y's. I need to select Christy and delete that Y. Now watch what happens to the, to the text. As soon as I make a uniform change over in this um, properties box, it's going to reset all those little tweaks I made. So I'll have to go back in and retweak a little bit of this. So let me zoom in again and get things lined up just the way I want. Um, okay, and now I will select the Y 
and line it up where I want it to be. Let's go back to one-to-one -to -one view. All right, and when I get that right Y in place, I can now select both items by holding down my Shift key and center the whole design in my hoop before saving. All right, so there's a name. Let's try a word. Let's say we want to use the word creative. I'll click set and choose starstruck. Let's do the 1.5 inch size. But let's say in this case, I want to change both the C and the E. So if I want to replace this regular lowercase C with the swirly left version, I would type a capital C. And if I want to replace that lowercase E um, with the swirl, I will type a lowercase and select the alternates. So now I have both the C and E in place. And let's see, if I like the way this looks and the way it's going to fit in the hoop, then I can start doing my tweaking. And I think that once we get everything spaced out, that will create a pretty balanced look. So let's go back up to creative and go ahead and delete the C and E from it. So I just have the middle part of the word. And we'll adjust the spacing a little bit to get everything to overlap. A lot of times when you've got a T, you may have to work on getting the letters to the right of it to tuck underneath just the way you want. I might actually scoot it down just a touch so that dot shows a little bit better. Now, as I'm getting ready to put my C in place, you'll notice something's going to happen. This is going to stitch according to the order of the objects up here. So it will stitch the R-E-A-T-I-V, and then it'll go back and stitch the C on top and then the E on top. And actually, we want that C to go first because we want it to tuck underneath the R in order to continue the script. So really, this needs to be two separate lettering objects. I really need to have the C by itself and create a third lettering object for that right E, typing a lowercase e. And then if I want the stitch order to change, I want the C to go first, so I will grab the rest of the word and drag and drop it on top of the C so that it will stitch the C first, then the creative, then the E. And let's see, I want to slide that in there right like that. Now if I select all my items by hitting the shift key and clicking on all those, I can center it in the hoop and step back and decide do I like the way that looks. I think actually I want to scoot the A over just a little bit more, which means I need to grab that E and move it as well. All right, so that shows you how you can do a word um, by replacing both the first letter and the last letter. Let me show you what I did with my daughter's name. Click set and go to, again, I'll just stick with the 1.5 inch size. All right, <clears throat> there are a few lowercase letters that have of the alternate rights the way that the swirls are positioned, they might be able to be used in other parts of the word. Let me show you how that looks. Um, let me zoom out here. The alternate right H, N, R, S, X, and Z all have their swirls that come off the right side end up tucking down below the word. And so sometimes that might mean letters could continue to follow. Um, after those letters. I think these are probably the only six where that works, but you can play around with it if you want. So let's go back to Annalise. She's got an N in the middle of her name. So let's see what the right N and the right E together would look like as alternates. What I could do instead is replace that second N and replace this final E. We'll see if I move my A up just a little bit. Then I can get a little bit of extra swirl going on in the middle of a long name or a long word by mixing and matching. So let's step back and look at this. If we want it to stitch from left to right, the way we would achieve that is we would need an A and N from the original regular set. So let's just do that, the A and N. All right. Then we need the right in from the alternates. All right, 
Now we need most of the rest of her name. So that's A-L-I-E-S from the regular font. And finally, I need another lettering object for the E of the alternates. All right, so now it's just a matter of getting everything positioned exactly where I want. I'm going to scoot that A up, and then this N is probably in place good. I'll just visually uh, line up the tops of the N's there, but for interest, you could move it around if you wanted to. For this middle chunk of her name, I'm going to slide everything together and try to get everything lined up just the way I want. E and scoot that over and then last I just need to select this E and drag it into place and again um, I'm just kind of watching the top of the E's to get them lined up just right all right now I can select all my objects um, by doing command A and center it in the hoop and there we go now let me show you a couple other things that can be done if we um, by combining multiple lettering objects. Let me open projects that we've done. All right, here's one where we combined several lettering objects. This actually shows off the capital L IV with an alternate E. Laugh is just the regular lowercase l, but an alternate H to finish the word. And then love uses the alternate opening L and then the rest of the word and keeps the regular E at the end instead of the fancy E at the end. Thank you for watching. We cannot wait to see how you put this font to use. Be sure to check out our other videos for more helpful tips.